Hi, I'm Daniel O'Connor. I'm from Warpit. We're talking about how organisations can save money by redistributing resources effectively and efficiently. We worked with Dan just over 12 months ago to start and look at how we were going to use Warpit. Um, and it was very much done in synergy with a programme of work that we were doing. Sunderland has a programme called Sunderland Way of Working and if I just paint a tiny picture of that you can see how we've managed to knit together what we're doing in Sunderland Way of Working with Warpit. With all the cuts in local government we were facing a significant challenge the same as everybody was and Sunderland decided that they were going to have a policy of no redundancies which was a huge step forward um, into unknown ground basically and therefore what they needed to do is to look at how they could make the savings through all sorts of different ways other than losing staff. One of the things that was set up was um, a programme of smarter working, how we could work smarter, work better to save money and a result, as a result of that we looked at property rationalisation and looking at what our assets were doing and whether we could use our assets in a different way. That created for us a huge problem because as you reduce your property, you're left with all the contents because everybody takes their own desk or looks at the furniture that we've got. And we were left with mountains of furniture, Everests full of lever arch files and all sorts of different things. And we were faced with this huge problem of what we're we going to do with everything. Um, Diane and myself, John, um, we were just swimming with that many lever arch files. I would open a room and we'd just stacked it, row upon row upon row of lever arch files. We'd got this ethos that there was nothing going in skips. You know, damn skips were just something that we didn't want to do, but what on earth were we going to do with everything? We then started to look and came across Warpit, and that's where we started to look and see how we could work with the programme. We'd done some ad hoc swapping because we thought, well, yes, I can move this furniture from here to here, but then it just went out of hand and we needed to have some sort of process, some sort of solution to what we could do. So what have we done so far? I've moved 3,700 staff. So that's people into different buildings, into different parts of our buildings. In all of these 3,700 moves, I've bought 34 new desks. Um, there is a total ban on our procurement. Um, so anybody who wants to buy a desk, buy a lever arch file, they can't. There isn't a procurement line for those purchases. They have to come through the Warpit system. And those 34 desks were just used as a pump priming for the first of our moves so that we could then move the rest of our furniture on in a process of cycling it on. You might think, well, you know, you're just moving bits of rubbish so it's the bottom end of the furniture market. Far, mm -hmm. far from it. The school that um, John was the caretaker at, um, believe you me, they had spent on furniture. Um, everything mm -hmm. was really, really top class. So when I went into that property, I was able to start and identify other wish lists that people had got. And one of the first things was that I refurbished the Assistant Chief Executive's office, and you wouldn't know that it was second-hand furniture. We've redone our reception at the Civic Centre. The reception desk came off Warpit. I pointed them to it, we got it off Warpit. So we've, there's nothing that we don't recycle um, amongst the range of things that we've done. Because of the volume of the stuff that we've got, and because um, when I've looked at the rates, council benefits um, that we get when I empty a property and it becomes empty and then non-rateable, um, mm -hmm. we needed to empty some properties rather than leave furniture there until it was claimed. So we had got an unused depot. Um, it was a depot that used to be belong partly to the North East Purchasing Organisation very nicely racked and ideal because it's got a loading bay and the space and we use that now to store the furniture that comes out of some of our properties 
goes on to warp it and is reclaimed from there. So I've just done you a few shots um, of some of the, the scenes that we've got. Um, it's not the most tidiest of place because it's, it's a moving feast, you know. We open it up every Wednesday morning and people come. Now, they, they, it's in their diaries whenever they want anything. So they come and claim the items or they come shopping and browse. We've put a laptop in there so that we can book stuff out as people see it. How many filing cabinets do you want? They're all usable. And what isn't usable gets recycled as, you know, right the way through our system or finally goes as metal waste. <coughs> One of our aspects under Sunderland Way of Working, um, we went for multifunctional devices and this meant that we'd got a plethora of printers <coughs> that were recycled on. But everybody had a spare cartridge, two spare cartridges, or a mountain of spare cartridges. But lots of organisations, our schools for example, haven't got multifunctional devices. But look at those. How much is one of those each? eBay 70 quid for 38A. And that's just one view. I could have gone round 360 degrees. And they are really, really recyclable. And the savings there are phenomenal. Count them up. Thousand quid sitting there? More than that. First item we traded was a fax machine. Now we trade everything from a sofa. A sofa in one of those schools that I closed down is now in the mayor's parlour. The mayor thinks it's lovely. She's got leather sofas in her parlour. The chairs that she had went to the steelworks. A computer desk to a conference table. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, everybody wants something of what we're recycling. I mentioned earlier that we've put a block on procurement. Um, we worked with colleagues to put that in place to make sure that there wasn't a loophole round, that warp it was embedded in what we were doing and how we were doing things. The benefits are for the schools. Um, I don't look at the aspect of um, the CO2s that we saved, etc. Um, <laughs> that's Di's area of specialism. Um, but I know when I look at the, the figure work that we are making significant savings. And because we're using a system like Warpit, we know that we've got um, the legislation in place that we need. <coughs> to date, and some of you will understand these figures a lot better than I have, 18 cars are off the road, 58 trees, um, and it's well, well over £100,000 worth that we've saved by just using Warpit. Um, 560 members of staff use the system, but you, you can multiply that because you might have one person in the office who's on it, but then they'll say to everybody, oh, can you just check if there's this, or the, you know, the, the chatting that goes on. Um, and we're working with a lot of our partners, um, the schools, the community organisations, the different charities. Um, I, the people that when I see it in a charity, um, the look on their faces when we've managed to help them out. Um, it's unbelievable the, the benefits that you're getting. So what's next? Andy will talk to you about how we're going to work with the LSP partners. Um, Di is looking at embedding it further within the council and looking at a, a household version. Um, and we're just going to carry on using it and gaining the benefits from it that we've seen so far. Okay. Thank you very much.